see, that was the alarm that we need to meet. Um, all right, so uh, first thing is set adjust agenda. Please tell me we're not adding anything, and in fact, we're taking off about five things. I got six things we gotta add. Yeah, we'll settle that. Um, actually, Opie, is um, the interim bylaws, is that happening or not? Yes. It is. I hope so. Okay. Yeah. I, didn't, I hadn't seen anything. Yep. It didn't come out, so okay. Yep, it needs to happen. Yep. Well, we'll just. Oh, I didn't see that in our packet. Okay. We'll I just like to, that's why I asked. Like, I don't know if it needs We can table. We can, when we, if we'll s I think Chris see, how see how it goes. goes. Okay. And there's some things we could table. Okay. When we get them. Just I the discussions. Great. Or we yeah. can be quick. All right. Yeah. Sounds good. Okay. So we're going to roll with the agenda we have. Next communication from the audience. Is anybody here who wants to communicate anything to the select board that's not on our agenda tonight? Now's the time. Now's the time. Hearing none, going to roll. Um, uh, OK, so we need to approve minutes from the last regular meeting, which was June 15th, and a special meeting, which was July 5th. I can motion to approve the June 15th regular meeting minutes and the special July 5th meeting minutes as written. Second. Any discussion on those? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Aye on the one on the left, yes. Aye on the one you were at, which was the regular meeting, not the special. Got it. You're abstaining. All right. All right. Uh, so motion carries. Minutes are accepted. Next, town manager report given by Mr. Upson. All right. Um, so I'm going to be a little redundant here to the board, but I'm going to go over what I went over last night. Great. So people that weren't at the meeting last yep. night and couldn't hear, um, they'll hear it now. So um, just basic, uh, what happened um, with the flooding, what we uh, repaired, what was damaged, what we re have repaired. Um, we had, s I'll just go through it. So we had 17 river crossings, which are bridges, culverts, box culverts, damaged or destroyed. Um, we've repaired all but three. Um, we have three road closures still, uh, or two road closures, Cary Road. Do you want to go over this in your report? Do you want to go over this in your report? No. Okay. Um, I don't want to steal your thunder. Um, so Fisher's Folly, Hardwick Farms, and Cary Road are still closed. Um, our wastewater plant took a pretty serious hit. Um, we've had visits from the Army Corps of Engineers, the EPA, the Vermont DEC, to assess the damages. Uh, our two lift stations were flooded and non-operational. We have since replaced the controls for those and they are fully operational in automatic um, mode. Um, we've completed almost 60 now damage assessments uh, throughout the town. We're basically collecting information uh, ahead of a disaster declaration, individual disaster declaration for our county, uh, we're crossing our fingers, hoping that we'll get it. Um, I put some information on our website this morning, or this afternoon, um, in the form of an email, and there's some information on that uh, post, so check that out. Um, we have a relief effort going on right now uh, up at 56 High Street, which is the Police Station and Senior Center. Uh, we have a lot of supplies up at the Senior Center um, for, you know, we have cleaning supplies, tools, um, extension cords, fans, pumps, stuff to, to really get in there and, and start um, cleaning residences. Um, the police chief has distributed a lot of these supplies uh, over the course of the last few days. And those supplies are free, right? Yes. Yep. So if people need stuff, it's not yep. high. Um, I'm kind of going through this. So uh, there's been uh, several banks and, uh, well, VSECU has um, announced a program for individual flood victims uh, up to $3,000 personal loans. And then for businesses uh, up to from 25,000 to 250,000 with deferred payments. Um, I've been in communication with the state, with the governor's office about this. Um, 
disaster declaration for individuals. So I'm, this, I'm being a squeaky wheel right now for Hardwick. Uh, some of the dollar amounts uh, we've spent uh, in, the, in the five days on road stuff, we've spent $91,500. Um, add another $36,500 in uh, material. And then the wastewater plant, we're at a low estimate right now of, of $100,000, but that's going to be more like eight hundred dollars to a million um, when we get all said and done. We've got disinfection going, we've got dechlorination going, we've got some biological treatment with the aeration. Um, and we still haven't, uh, we're, we've energized the main power to the plant, but we still haven't um, energized any, any breakers or, or low voltage. I think we have one circuit powering a blower right now. But we have temporary power down there from the construction project that we're just running extension cords as needed in the, in the plant. Um, we're running off a temporary pump uh, for our headworks, running on a float. Uh, so that's a diesel pump pumping directly into the head of Lagoon Number One. Um, the town manager's office. Uh, we got uh, finally today got a um, company in there to check on the uh, water damage. We had infiltrate infiltration into the basement, and we're exploring uh, temporary office space in the Hardwick Inn right now. Uh, we can't stay in there. It's starting to get pretty nasty and moldy. Um, and we've got the floor up and it's all uh, sticky. Um, we pulled the carpet up because uh, that was saturated. We had probably like an inch and a half, two inches of standing water in there. Have you guys thought about just moving up to the third floor here? Yeah, that, that is an option. Um, it's just space and being able to secure stuff. Right. Um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the senior center offices are tiny, tiny and full. Yeah full of stuff um, so we're just and we yep. you know we might do a job trailer we don't know yet but we're we can't stay there especially if they're gonna start ripping and tearing in there is there any damage in the downstairs vault I haven't been in there yeah good, good catch seems like you guys can move up here and see how it goes it's just an elevator trip yeah, but we can't secure it. We can't secure it. And they them can't out. lock this. So the wobble members can't lock this. No. These grooves are so. They can't something. lock the building, but they can't the lock elevator this. Elevator time you run it? Yeah, I tested it out. It's definitely got issues. Well, that that sump underneath might have gotten some water. It was beforehand. Okay. Yeah. And are we aware of that? Okay. Yeah, she's called. Okay. Um, the fire station we're looking at uh, eighty-five thousand plus. We moved, um, we moved the trucks on Monday before the storm. Uh, our insurance adjuster has come in to the fire department and the wastewater facility. I can pause. Carry on. Okay. Um, and then we had a damaged police cruiser with a new engine uh, range uh, estimates of $11,000. So overall, Low estimate of three hundred thousand dollars in this uh, flood event, um, but the, I would bump that up to a million three with the wastewater plant. But do you want to do reinforce the two one one people? Yeah, people. Um, if if you haven't called two one one to report your damages, um, that is not FEMA. Two one one is a state program, and FEMA uses that statistic to determine where the, where the need is and where um, they need to direct resources. Um, so that is, you're not calling 211 to, to get financial assistance, you're calling 211 to make that initial report. So if you haven't done that yet, please do it. And that's damage to your residence, not to your property. Any damage. Yeah. Doesn't have to be. Any water damage, yeah. Flooded basement, um, furnace, hot water heater, um, Infiltration in your basement, any you know, any damage associated with the weather event. Because that's how they collect the data. That's right. how we potentially get in the counties that are getting assistance. From yep. yep. Opie, what's the the significance of having Caledonia County declared a disaster? 
because well, individual assistance it, from FEMA. It's really individual relief. So a, a homeowner can get reimbursed for their damages. If the county is declared. If the county disabled. is declared. So but for people not, to call in and say, I need help, yeah. the more there are of that, right. the more probable that designation will be made. When the initial declaration was made and FEMA had boots on the ground last Saturday, I was told that there was only six calls into 211, which, you know, we're, we're one town in California. I mean, there's there's pockets in Greensboro and, and, and Standard, but, and then Orleans got hit hard, but that's a different county. Right. So, okay. Hardwick really it was the, got the brunt of this in Caledonia County. And so it's, Hardwick is need not, to call for help. Yeah. Not, it's just to call and report that you have damage. Yeah. Yeah. It's not really, you're not going to get help from that call. But just to report but the damage. But the whole county will get help from that call. You're not going to get help without that call. Yeah. Right, right. And then we'll have a table tomorrow at the farmer's market, which is at Hazen Union High School, um, where people, we, um, there'll be town staff there and people can ask a question, um, try to get it answered, and we'll have some information there too. You can sign up for assistance with filling out yeah. applications. System with grant applications, yeah. Essentially, FEMA is a grant program. Right. Yeah. Great. All right. May I have that? Yeah. The historical record. Um, yeah. Well, we don't know if it's worth, but so when, what we heard from some people last night too is that you, it's really easy to fill it out online, the two on one report, and that leaving a message is important, yes. and that they'll call you back. So yes. choosing it was extension five, right? Thank you, Kyle. Yeah. yeah, definitely leave a if you call and don't get anybody, leave a message because that is that is documentation and you're in the queue. Great. Yeah. Um, all right. So next up is road foreman report. Mr. Fadden. <coughs> he said it all. He said it all. He said it all. Tell us all our trucks are running. <coughs> Nothing changed it. No, no, I'm going to. So. <laughs> yeah, you just had them. All the, all your, our subcontractors too. Oh, like make sure we throw uh, that. For the first, first week when we first started the flood, uh, we had both Perry trucks. Uh, we had Gagne, uh up on Montgomery Road, that was in front of us all. Lagos actually volunteered, well I don't know, I ain't seen no bills from them, but <laughs> I mean, they uh, had their uh, silos trucks. So we were wow. holding them with uh, uh, gravel and stuff. Uh, Ronnie Brown, Scott Strucken, uh, Fred Vance, uh, Danny, is there anybody else? What's ours? What's that? Uh, well, no, I'm just thinking about trucking right now. No, but yeah, you got, but you got to include Tyler and Timmy. Yeah, uh, yeah. So uh, Tyler Demers here, we're getting all the gravel from uh, his pit up in uh, Dutton Road and off from uh, Room 16, and it's the only source that we had. Timmy Bell has been a couple of yeah. really long, hard days. Yeah. Because we were really an island for quite a while, because we couldn't get up 14 to Kenny's bed. We couldn't get in our bed because that was the way we washed down. So we were stuck with Tyler. So we had to build the road to the pit, and we've been building roads from pit to pit ever yeah. since. <laughs> <laughs> that's, a, that's true. It's, it's, they were all over the last yeah. uh, Gravel construction was, was great for us because uh, it's come that Tuesday, I think it was Tuesday afternoon, uh, I had them jump right on Bunker Hill. Uh, to get that opened up up there. Uh, so we kept them on that end. So we went from there to Dennis Blackbird's Road, uh, Smith Farm, and he ended up opening that road up. And then I think it was probably Wednesday, I think it was Wednesday, uh, we went to Gates Junkyard, got a uh, probably a 12, 12 foot diameter fuel tank, I think it was. We ripped out the bridge that has collapsed up on Tucker, Tucker Road. Road and. Uh, Dean did a great job up there. He got that in place. And by Friday night, we had two people out. And then by Saturday, he went up and rerouted, rerouted the brook out from our road back where it belonged. And we got the last person out. I think it was Saturday afternoon. Uh, so all roads are travelable. Uh, of course, you're going to come to some dead end ones here and there, like uh, Harvard Farms is a short section. 
Uh, we got one house, Bishop Follies. We don't know what we're going to do with that bridge yet. Uh, of course, we, we got to wait for the state report and see what happens with that. Uh, Dunn Road, uh, that is now open. So you can actually do a loop now from Nichols out through. We got that six foot culvert in place yesterday with a light coat over the top. Uh, today we went back and built head walls on it because of the rain that uh, hopefully don't do anything tomorrow uh, to protect that. So now that's a loop back around. Um, basically everything else we've been for the last two days just trucking material on some of the smaller washouts along the side of the roads, just trying to fill them in and get them back lighter and stuff. Uh, hopefully on Monday we're going to concentrate up on Tucker Brook, the upper up, the uh, up, upper end of it. See if we can't take, it's probably going to take probably most of next week just, just to do that one road right there. And then hopefully the following week plan is to try to do something on Carrier Road to try to get that bridge back open. Even though we do have some minor slides there that we're going to probably put concrete barricades around, but at least it will be, you know, back open. So that will just leave us, what, Lagos Farm and Fisher Falls. That will not be open. And, and the bridge uh, on Hardwick Farms Road on the center road side is, is, is not to be used by, by the general public. Uh, that bridge, the, I would granted them permission to put that in to, to get their crops. Um, so that should not be used. That road is still closed and it should not be used by the general public. Because it is cracked. Why would I need their... This day. Things are, things are, it was Tuesday, I think it was. And it takes more pictures for the state because uh, we started the process of the hydraulic study and stuff. So they needed pictures of you know the approach on both sides with the stream stuff. Uh, so I got all those. I'll be working on that tomorrow. Uh, get getting out that I'll send in so they can come up and make sure that FEMA will have their stuff so we can upgrade and get the money that we need to actually put in either box collar or bridges for, for in that case. Um, we've been trying to do stuff around the village. I know it's been kind of hard because we've been on the outskirts. Uh, I know this morning I tried to take the broom down through and trying to do a little sweep and sweep up around the village a little bit. Um, fix the lower parking lot. Um, probably next week. Uh, what we're trying to do, Tucker Brook, the guys got on from Stone. We're going to try to button up West Hill too and try to redo that sec section up there that's on, on the blacktop and, and get that. But uh, and after these roads are back, then we'll probably be just concentrating on just finish work because we still got Belfry. Uh, we still got on the other side of Harvard Farms, that call right there. Uh, the White Nail build head walls on that stuff. Uh, everything we're doing. It's basically what I call a temporary fix. Uh, we won't get reimbursed by FEMA to go to a bigger size culvert unless we do all this hydraulic study. I know Casey had a call this week of uh, a lady out in the Macro area wondering why we were putting the same exact culvert back. That is why. We can go bigger if we want, but we won't get paid for it unless the hydraulic study is done. So we have to do everything by their standard, or not standard, but by their rules. And I mean, ideally, won't the hydraulic study tell us how much bigger? Yes, the hydraulic study will tell us, you know, instead of a six-foot culvert that we had washed out on that row, that there might end up being, you know, a box culvert, right. you know, or that's right. 10 feet high, you know, yeah. like 15 feet wide. Yeah. Uh, so that will take care of all that, and then FEMA will pay for that. And but that's all that stuff is going to happen over the course of probably the next two years. Yeah, years. because by the time this gets through, and by the time we go out to bid on this process, and by the time it's awarded, by the time they try to build these concrete boxes and stuff like that, it's, it's it, it, we're not the only town. Yeah, right. I mean, it's a lot of places in the basically one. every ditch on every road needs to be addressed. If it didn't fail, then it's gone, <laughs> and it's going to fail the next door. You know what I'm saying? So it's. I mean, I'd say on the plus side, though, we had places where you guys had done a fair amount of ditch work yes. and drainage work that held up really well. Like, yeah, like Bridgman Hill is a steep road. Well, Cape Brook Road is a great Cape Brook Road. I mean, you, the places on Garvey, too. I mean, places where you guys have invested time and money into yeah. getting the Our biggest drainage. problem, just like with every town, with every storm, was the block collards. Yeah. And that's what happened on Tucker Brook, because once the water got to a certain height, 
one of the concrete blocks fell and there's a log in there probably about this big around that's wedged in there. So it just, yeah. It's the nature of the construction yeah. of those old blocks. Yeah. Gran granite block. Granite yeah. block. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Beautiful right. block. Well, as we, as you heard last night, everybody's very appreciative of all the efforts of everybody getting. The yeah, there were uh, people up on uh, Tucker Brook couldn't believe how fast we got down. Yeah. So was, there, there was a lot of other people too, uh, residents like Rita Demers and Shawnees were. Oh God, yeah. Their stepfathers, but that, they spent the whole day on their track. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Kate Brook rolled near from our out there all day. Yeah. yeah. I'll buy our town line. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Harry Daly came out Harry with his excavator with another guy that we didn't even know that down here with Bud Jones. It'd be great to be able to uh, they went figure all that out. So so they they all everybody. Yeah. Yeah. There are a lot of people that took it upon themselves yeah. to, to at least get access. So. Yeah. Very impressed with this community right now. Because yeah. Andrew Rat Lag is there. We had his excavator on Montgomery um, Road and then Stage House for doing that while our excavator was on Belfry and the tobacco was over here. So. Everybody pulled together and everybody would just whatever, and, you know, without even asking, you know, go fix the road. They were just up there doing it. So Yeah, that's great. Yeah. It's good. Access access to homes is really important. Yes, yes, they were very <laughs> happy. Uh, so yeah. and other than all uh, crushing will be Tuesday, I think. So just about the right timing. For us up in the pit, so. And that's in our existing pit. No, we're, we're, no, we're going to try out pennies. Okay. Because uh, we're right. kind of mixed because we're going to haul out of pennies on Monday, then once crushing gets there. That's why we were trying to, this afternoon, we were fixing up our old pit to get down in, into there. So then on Tuesday, we can haul out from there and keep, keep going with the process up on that rug. Okay. So. All right. It's a dance. It's a dance, it really yeah, is. Yeah. So we're, we're out, out yeah. the new bed and the material that was screwed because of this storm, we ended up mixing it back together. Yeah. <laughs> so it's just kind of the irony of the whole situation. Right. You know, it was uh, we needed to make run and it had already been screened, you know stuff we get to it already been screened, so we had to make our own bag run. Again. But <laughs> but we are starting to see like uh Menasha pit, low on stone. Yeah, very right. little. Uh, the guys went to Fry's, or not Fry's, but over in Danville, over to Seacard's bed. Same thing. Yeah, Marshfield's out. Yeah. So it's going to be a struggle. To yeah. Probably get stolen. The gravels that were fortunate, they just had the crusher and woke up for three weeks. Um, but I heard the state took everything yeah. they had. So I've got uh, the state put out an Act 250. Permit emergency, uh, permit emergency permit. So I've got Gary Nolan looking into that. Yeah, we should. It'd be a good time for us to cut yep. the rock up there on that too. Yep. Oh yeah, it would. Yeah. So we're we're on top, top, top of that right now. Get it opened up. Great. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, they got emergency extraction, so and that's already got a fresh permit too, so they can yes. I mean, yeah, Gary's a guy. Yeah. <clears throat> what does the emergency permit permit? It allows it. It could potentially allow us to get in there and blast ledge. So we could make our own crushed right. stone products. So it's it's essentially setting aside some of the Act 250 requirements so that we can get the job done. Right. I don't know. I don't know if they're setting it aside. They're just opening. Right. It's it, a, just expediting it. Right. Yeah. So the, yeah. They're, they're, they're moving the it through. Expediting the process. Yeah. So we might end up end that with an Act 250 permit that amendment. We're in a situation that a lot of people are. So like. So like Menashe's might have an extraction rate of 100,000 cubic yards or whatever a year. So they're already in the process too, so they can just say, go ahead, do more. We're kind of right on the edge of getting ready to start, right. starting to expose, so we would be the, we would be a really good candidate. I mean, they're, they're not going to let you go out and fill in the swamp to get to your last ship. They're not going to make like those decisions, but it would be a great time to get started on marriage for sure. Yeah. Other than the fact that we need it. It's a long way to Danville or, or Ryan's yeah. yeah, it's expensive. It's expensive. All right. Thank you. <clears throat> next, next up, the Harvard Police that. Department. It's been very short. It's taking a long time to get um, I just want to say a big thank you to the neighbor and neighbor group. Um, we've got next door the uh, senior center. The senior center today decided to give it up. Uh, allow all the supplies in there we had. And I need to put together a list of all the people that 
going in today. Today, Google Motor came in with a truckload of stuff and dropped off. Uh, but we had uh, you know, Amazon, a lot of other big places that donated a lot of stuff and we'd like to uh, compile that list and we'll get that out there. Jericho hardware store. Yeah. Jericho. Jericho. Yeah. Here we go. That's wonderful. Places from out of the area yeah. that just donated a lot of people to. Um, <coughs> right now, we are short on box fans. Try to put it in order for more dehumidifiers, but maybe uh, it's really uh, in order to do it, the uh, procurement process to get it and then get reimbursed. And I can talk to you about that later. But we have a need right now, I think there are 15 more homes that can use dehumidifiers. Uh, they went down and purchased uh, six today in our yard. Can people just show up at the yes. senior center and, and their neighbor and neighbor is has a person there, a volunteer person from seven to one to seven every night. So we're trying to do that. Uh, also working uh, on getting people the help they need to get dug out. Uh, they need volunteers to the house. Um, we're working on that and get in there and help them pluck stuff out and get stuff out of the basement. Uh, that's going on tomorrow. So, um, and the PD is still functioning? I think so. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think the PD is still functioning. We, you know, we did get, uh, uh, Brian, no, we got uh, these big signs, uh, radar signs that we're going to put up. We got two of them. They're a uh, combination battery and solar. Um, Bob Now is. Um, I'm not going to ask. <laughs> I will. No, no. That, that's like very low down here now. So. All right. Good. Great. Yep. Thank you. Uh, yeah. Next up, we have uh, Mike Sullivan's here for the Harvick Electric Department report. Okay. Go ahead. So, my report's going to be about the storm. Yeah. Uh, uh, these are typical conditions we were trying to deal with to respond to outages, as many of you have seen. We actually had crew, the first crew that came in to respond to outages, uh, the calling guy is responsible for showing up and getting a second man for the two-man rule before they can respond to an outage. And then the time uh, it took him to get a guy to respond, which is not long, 15 minutes, He's at the shop. By the time they checked in with the call center, got in their truck to go, there was three feet of water in the warehouse. And the bridge was floating away. So they right. tried to get out, the truck died, and they called me and I said, get in the warehouse and stay, stay as high as you can. Right. And they slept there and I slept in the office and we got up at five and the waters were receding and we started going to work. But those are the things that hindered us. We ended up, uh, I think we had the most outages after the initial wave of outages, and we had the longest outages, but uh, when we actually responded to some of those outages, they, they were not outages. We, had, we I was reporting about 150 on the state outage site, and once we got down to those areas, primarily in Woodbury and Callis, that we couldn't reach, uh, we actually ended up going all the way to West Danville and around. Um, only about 70 of those were outages, so we were pretty happy to find that. Um, a couple of our dams breached. They didn't fail, but they had water coming over the top. This is Caspian. <coughs> you can see the concrete. There's a walkway there that people usually travel on. Yeah. And actually came over and started to take out the beach side of the spillway. Um, but it didn't get too bad, so that will be repairable. Yeah. The big bad news, as Eric can attest to, is the Wolka Hydro facility, which is going to be at least a $2 million repair. A wave came over the wing wall on the south side of the dam when the board's like fell off. 
came right over the 15 foot wing wall down. Uh, you can see one, two, three, or this picture here. That's the inside of the pen stocks. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's all four feet underground. That wave came down, lifted that whole four feet of fill, swirled it right up around the picture afterwards. The wave came from my right here, went up and around towards the substation, and then right through the front of the power house. Blew, blew the doors open, blew the windows out, air cleaned. This was yeah. a disaster. If you look further in, you can see the turbine and the debris. Um, you could eat off that floor previous to this event. Uh, this one is the control room where all the electronics and computers and sensors were there those you can also see in the back left corner of the photo the water line that was in the building right to the stadium uh, this is more of the control system that's all charged and picture the guys in the building with a couple excavators coming in and out took over a hundred dump trucks of mud and silt out of the power and then there's a picture of the guys getting their own back in business and we do have our own back and we do have access and we're starting the process of cleaning up the facility. Uh, the other one I have is the sound pond. First picture is how I found it the first morning. Usually there's about four to six inches running in the bottom of the spillway. As you can see here, this is it was Nichols. Full. That's Nichols. Yeah. yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Wow. It was full, and it actually had already come up over this side. Yeah. Yeah. If you go to the next page. Uh, oh yeah, that's sinkhole. The sinkhole. That's exactly where the sinkhole was when the dam failed. Oh really? Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. Is that yeah. running down the road from the parking lot? It's right next to the parking. Yeah, okay. right. so I wonder if that sinkhole is part of that runoff from the parking lot as well. No, no. So no. what it is is the if you can can't really see that well, but along the edge of the concrete you can see the trail where people walk and get in and out of the water and pack it down, pack it in. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Well, the water came up right there and it found a way through until it hit a low point where the bonfires always are, and it started washing through. And if you go through one button, showing my pickup truck there, that's pretty much the, the damage. And then the next one is the spillway the next morning. Uh, I didn't show you. In the very first photo, on the right side of the spillway, there's a gate. Yeah. You can barely see it. It's yeah. in the shape of a banana at this point because it's full of leaves and sticks and it's holding the flood water back. <laughs> so we got out there with the crane truck and we pulled that thing out. You can see the brackets for it in this picture of the spillway once it's lowered. Yeah. And the water's gone down 28 inches over there. So that was really um, So the purpose of that gate is to normally not let people fall up over. Yeah, for, for like people safety. Down. Yeah, yeah, 20 feet down with some boulders. Yeah, uh, that. But that was not a very good design, so we're replacing it with some safety chains. Yeah, that would hold people, but not as but much not debris. debris. Yeah. Yeah. So this is what it looks like today with all the repair. Pretty fantastic. It's all re uh, put heavy density fill back in there. Topsoil it to about eight inches more elevation than it was, so the water can't come up over it. And seed it, mulch it, and post it, keep out. You know, because we want the grass to be growing in there. One other thing I didn't show you, uh, in the original picture, or even the, yeah, the original picture is fine. Uh, the other side of the dam, on the other side of the spillway, where people don't congregate and hang out, no water came over that, no damage, no nothing, because its elevation has not been packed down by all the people activity on it over the last whatever years. Also, looks like the concrete is a couple inches higher. Um, no, 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 it's the same. It's just the, the, no, the, I think you're right here, it is higher on that side, but it's because of the deterioration. Right, on the right hand side, side it looks deteriorated. That's yeah. from people? Yes. Oh. Constantly water hitting it and then 
climb it in and out, the other side doesn't get that. Right. Okay, so any questions about individual disorders to me? I'm ready for them. I'm just curious about so that um, that hydro plant at Pottersville produced approximately 15% of our annual power, right? Yes, correct. And so without that, it seems to me, I don't remember precisely, but it seems to me that's a fairly large hole in the portfolio of energy. So how does that, how, do you, how do you fill that? Is so that, I report to you when I'm here, uh, most often I, one of the things I include is our coverage, Yeah. our coverage percentage. We, always, we shoot to have between 95 and 105% coverage. We don't always get that, but that's the target. And that leaves us basically a 5% hedge into the market that we might get stuck with. Well, now we're that plus 15% because we don't have the hydro, we have more market exposure, which we don't want. Right. We don't Especially we don't want it in the winter, right? Right. It's good right now. The power market is very low. And there's a lot of natural gas stored. Markets are way, way down. So it's okay right now. But we need to get some planning going before winter because it's going to be a year before we get that back on the market. Is it possible to buy like a year-long contract for power? Okay. Yeah. We'll have... We'll, be beginning those discussions here next week with that. Because usually you guys buy power on quite long term yeah. contracts, right? We yeah. like longer, and know, they're staggered. Set, and set uh, pricing, longer terms, yeah. Yeah. So this is be different. You look to just cover. Yeah, we don't, I don't know what, it, what we're going to end up with, but we're going to have to definitely get another agreement in place, short, shorter term agreement in place until we get that back on. Did this storm impact any of the sources that you typically go to for to buy power? No. Okay. Oh. Um. We're happy about that. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. No. I guess last time we talked about the rate. Last time we talked about the rate case, so we heard the update on that. Okay, so what do you want to do another one? We've just, got we've got the final order. Uh, the PUC did give the final order for the agreed to 5.53 percent uh, that the DPS said we should have. Uh, they the DPS essentially has said we want you and other municipal utilities to change your business model and <coughs> incur more debt. And I think I've talked to you about yeah. that and their philosophy about, you know, longer term purchases affecting longer term customers, which we totally agree with. But to us now start incurring debt for things that we normally would have chinked away at over a three year, five year project, they want us to go bam, do it now and, and take a loan for it. So that's a major philosophy difference and uh, we're going to have to look at how we best do that. But right now, we're trying to finalize this rate case, get the refunds back to uh, the customers for the overcharges that we've had with the surcharge, and we'll be going from there. Just seems a bit heavy-handed of them to tell, to say this is how you need to run your business. Yeah, I don't like it either. Um, but it's either accept it or litigate it, and litigating isn't good for anybody. It's good for the lawyers. But yeah, it's good for them. <clears throat> Like I assume, especially for the hydro dam, is do you think you're going to get help from the state and feds for that? Do you think we're going to get FEMA support for? I think we'll get some FEMA money. That takes a long time, right. and it's quite a process to get in. You know, you're, you have to apply. Yep. Um, so we'll obviously do that. But even if we did do that, it's only 70% reimbursement. So it's still going to be a lot of money for us if we did get FEMA. Uh, the good thing about FEMA monies is if you get into the program and you are awarded monies, they really look for opportunities to say, okay, uh, water came over and destroyed your powerhouse. What could, we, what could you have done or what can we do now to make sure that doesn't happen again? And they're real generous with those things. And if we had a wing wall that was five feet higher, this wouldn't happen. That's pretty cheap investment for a little more concrete and some rebar. 
Um, so I'll definitely be looking for those opportunities to get those monies out of it too. We do have uh, DLCT insurance, three different policies, um, big policies, but uh, the way passive works is that it's a group fund and it's a group liability they look at. So this event has a group liability of $5 million, um, which I think is going to be exceeded by a lot. Which, who, who's in the group? For all that? the others. All oh, the whole, all of us. Yeah. So what happened is back in the That's day, the, yeah, yeah. Nobody, none of us could get insurance yeah. for these types of events. Yeah. So Passive was formed, this group, and we all participate in it, and it has some quirky rules in how it works, but uh, that's how we get the insurance we have. Otherwise, we would have nothing. Right. And back to the FEMA question, that's why when Opie and I were meeting with uh, was it the Army Corps and the, um, the National, Guard. National Guard, and we had them, they were interested in the sewer plant, and we said, well, we're going to take you down and show you this uh, power plant, too. So, because we want that to be on the radar. All right. Um, Sharon Cardet is with us on Zoom, and she has a question for HEB. Right. Do you want to unmute yourself, Sharon? Hi, Sharon. Oh, we can't hear you. Could you speak up a bit? Can you hear? Yeah. Uh, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. I wasn't sure if I unmuted it correctly. Um, I'd like to to address Mike, if I could, please. Um, several of us, in fact, three of us, were trying to um, zoom in on the ATD meeting uh, Monday night, and none of us were able to access Zoom. It um, blocked us and said that there was a meeting in progress and would not have been any of us. Um, we wanted to provide information and input on the Nichols Pond, which I know is right now not priority compared to the flood. But for those of us who caretake up there and swim, it's a big issue. And so I just wanted to let you know that um, due to handicap inaccessibility, we couldn't, some of us couldn't attend and we were unable to access Zoom. So is there another way we can provide input to you? Yeah, we're going to have it on the agenda for the next meeting, my boss just told me. <laughs> and we did have a public meeting uh, with Zoom access, and we did have multiple uh, members of the public join the meeting. So I apologize that that was a quirk there for you, but uh, we did have a meeting, and it did, we did have people joining us. So. Okay, thanks. Uh, I just wanted to let you know that maybe, I don't know if the platform was full, we had the meeting ID, we had the passcode, and now the three of us could not get in. So, just to let you know. Okay. okay? Yeah, if you can, uh, do I have your email, Sharon? I think I do. Hello? My email, yes, I can give that to you. Yeah, I think I have it. If I don't, if you email it to me, I'll make sure you get the link for the next meeting. Okay, because I would appreciate it, because being mobility challenge, and you being handicapped inaccessible, I can't get down there to a meeting in person. But we have our meetings so, in this building now, so you could get here. Where do you have your meetings? I'm in the sorry. Memorial Building. So the same, I, so you're right, meeting right there in, in the Memorial Building, okay. which is accessible. Okay. Uh, All right. You have to come in from the, the side, downstairs side entrance. Right? The town yeah, I'm aware entrance. of where that is. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. Thank you very much. I'm, I'm glad the meetings occur there. That will make it much easier. Thank you. Great. That's all I needed. Good. Thanks for uh, thanks for your input. Uh, any other questions for Hardwick Electric? While we're here. No. All right. Thank you. Um, Thanks for the report. We're going to roll. Um, next up is item one, select board to review and sign bond documents for the library and the gravel pit 
uh, bonds um, slated to close in early August, uh, so we need to get these done. Okay, so just, uh, I'll, I put them all in here, I'll just summarize them really quick. So obviously, so it's one note for $1,000,000. Um, and so we're going to need to So there's a lot of stuff for us to sign, but there's one thing we need to resolve. Correct. You, um... No, actually, there, all you really need to do is just make a motion to approve these documents and sign them. Okay. Because you've already done the previous resolution. Uh, okay. Individually? Uh, okay. Yes. All right. So, uh... I can motion that we... Uh, do we need to approve them, Kate? So approve, yep. I motion we approve and sign the bond documents for the library of $550,000 and the gravel pit for $500,000. Perfect. Do second it. Any discussion on the bond? Bonds. Uh, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? That was everybody anyway. So motion carries. Thank you. A lot of stuff to sign there. Um, Next, uh, item two, so look forward to review and consider approving the FY24 tax rate presented by Tanya Chase, clerk treasurer. So it says, and you are here in person. Thank you for circulating that information. Any questions? I mean, it went up a little. Uh, it went up a little. Uh, it right. Right. So I just want to. Can you just tell us what the rate is, the new rate and the old, the new rate anyway? Yes. So it's, the new rate is the municipal rate is 1.5 at all by the damage that's happened because this is all about last year. It's yeah, really just the set yeah. people first, so that's what it yeah. Sorry. Okay. That was lost there for a minute. Mm -hmm. okay, so it's 1.3823 is the new rate the new that we're rate. setting, but the old rate was 1.3264. Okay. 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 Okay, awesome. Which is less than 5%, right? Yeah. All right. So Our grant list went up a fair amount. So what's the motion we do? The to set the tax rate at 1.3823. 1.3823. Yes. For fiscal year 24. For fiscal year 2324. Yeah. All right. Motion. Second. Mo yeah, second. Uh, discussion on the motion tax rate. All right. I, look, math look good to me. So, and we just the voters already approved the budget. So all we're doing is setting the tax rate that satisfies the budget. So, all right. So all in favor of approving the the new tax rate at one point three eight two three, please say aye. 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 Any. Aye. <laughs> Any opposed? <laughs> Motion carries. Cell phones at meetings. We'll have, we'll have to have a basket out in the other room. Yeah. Except then we'll start ringing and we'll be able to shut them off. Then I won't be able to come to the board meetings. All right, next item three select board to review and approve annual internal financial controls checklist. And this also comes from Tanya, I think. So everything is the same as it was last year. The only thing, except one thing, um, the signature stamp ever been used by uh, for any town and county. Alberta had one previously. It's not been in use for several years. So it's Is it something that we still have that has her name on it? It's in the vault. Yeah. Okay. It's just under lock and key. Okay. All right. Yes. 
and that's okay. what we're showing. All right, and um, so this is something that gets presented to us every year, and our duty is to um, show that we received it. That's all we're doing with this. Um, and but the point is for us to read it. Yeah. And approve it. And approve it. And well, uh, no, we're just receiving it. And question it if need be. Question if need be, yep. but. Okay, so it's review and approve on the. I said the review and approve. So I just kind of meant approve. Well, we should review it. You have questions? I just want to make one comment. Yeah. We made this comment last year too, which is the um, the item about have select board members attended financial trainings. Mm -hmm. So there are a lot of resources um, for us to actually do trainings yep. through VLCT. So. Um, we should. Note to something. self, yes. Yeah, we yes. To I, I forward them along when yep. I get them. Yes. Well, I've done most of them. You delinquent. Is that what that call is about? <laughs> yeah, that's, believe it or not, that's what that call is about. <laughs> well, Tanya, if we do them, should we report to you that we've done them? Yes. Yeah. And then she would know. And then paid? she would know. Right. Print out your certificates. We got a volunteer? No, you get paid. <laughs> <laughs> We all get paid thousand dollars a year. I know. Okay. I just got a check. Yeah. So there you go. All right. Moving along. Moving along. Um, Thank you. I need to sign it. Uh. Well. Yeah. We can. Uh, would you want a motion that we received it? That we always. You always usually vote for the annual. I can uh, motion okay. that we approve the annual internal fiscal controls checklist for 2023. Second. Uh, uh, discussion? Yes, yeah, discussion. We know, we shouldn't say don't know when we know the answer is no. But she doesn't but know. I don't know because we haven't yes come in no. and told her, so she doesn't no, have any idea what we've done. She is. <laughs> Next year it's a yes or no answer. <laughs> um, I must say yes. <laughs> so well, today's the 20th? Before you sign that, huh? you need to. All in favor? Uh, please aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Tanya, Let's before we move on, this says have train attended financial trainings. Does that mean within this fiscal year, as opposed to maybe I did one five years ago? Right. Okay. So right. Yes. Okay. So basic math in 1978 is <laughs> not relevant. Gives me no points. Uh, next item four. Um, Tim Nisbet and Patty Meyer here from Harvick Rescue. Tim's going to present the plan, possible plans to the select board for the expansion of their existing building on Creamery Road. It says possible action needed. We'll find out. Ooh, we got the checkbook. <laughs> <laughs> we're, not asking, we're not asking the money. Oh, no. Where well, we going? Checkbook to write the house. Stand up for a second. Talk to us. We have pictures here somewhere. Yeah, what we gave you was a um, couple, basically maps. Yeah. One, one of which is, I believe, off the tax map. Right. And just shows that currently our leasing from the town of Hardwick, 0.1 acres. Is that basically the footprint of the building? It's by, more or less. Yeah, sort of. I think it's like 15 feet around. Okay. In about, um, so we've been working on this for about a year now. Um, we need to basically double our space. Currently, we have 2,100 square feet. And what we're considering is about 4,200 square feet. In order, and, and to further go a little bit astray, we've looked at a number of sites, including the uh, snack bar site and all the land that the town owns behind it. This we we so tested that right. theory. Yeah. We, we tested that theory, and that is yeah. um, it's not perfect. <laughs> <laughs> we looked at some sites in the village, and uh, we actually had a, a study done, a feasibility study done by people from Jumeirah, not Barry, not Barry. And um, they presented us with different options, and the best option was to be right where we are. And our membership has approved that, if that's what they would like to do. Um, so we'd like to double the size of that building. And get this, we are leasing that piece of land for you guys. We have a 99 year lease for a dollar a year. I don't think we've ever paid. I don't think we've ever paid. <laughs> <laughs> but um, 
So what this would entail is going back into the bank behind our current building, um, which on the tax map shows something about being an encroachment uh, from Josh Allen, that property. So we, we, what we're looking for is just your approval to go ahead and uh, pursue this project. We do not have a voting design yet. Um, we did do up a design which uh, was renovating the current building. And when DeWolf looked at that idea, it was going to need more money to renovate that building than it would be to demolish it and put up a new, bigger building. One of the reasons is everything has to, because this is an essential building, it can't be in a floodplain, first of all. And secondly, the building specifications are more than a regular, normal commercial building that's someplace else. So bigger walls, more bigger structure. So that's what we're looking for, is see if uh, yeah. you guys would approve of us going along with this. Go ahead. Well. And I think we want to, the reason we don't have to do something new is that we can't, uh, we are now fortunately getting more people, but they're from out of town. So we need to have some place where they can sleep at night, have a decent bathroom, you know, right. Washington, all uh, that, so they can attract uh, more people uh, too. I, I looked today when I went by, the ambulance are both in there, and it's like, this is tight. I just wish that we had our town garage project at a point where we could be in sync, but we don't, so. Um, I don't think we should hold it back. No, we can't hold you back for that just because we don't have our stuff together. Um, Does this mean you need more land, or can yes. this all be done? Yeah, we need a bigger footprint. Yeah, we need to figure asking if we can extend onto the parking property, you know, to, to build it in the back. Behind. behind. Yeah, behind. And, and closer to the existing town garage, I think, right? Yeah. yeah, there would be definitely room in between for snow and shade. Right. Yeah. yeah. Yep. And is this is this going to be enough space for the new, you know, is that additional 2,000 square feet going to be enough? Just thinking if you're if you're investing in this, like, is it just, just a question? Like, does this is for the long haul. Yeah. As Patty says, it's mostly to provide a reasonable place for our people to come from out of town to stay. And also enlarge our, our meeting room and training room. Mm -hmm. Everything is all mm -hmm. you know, by extending in the back and have a lot better training area. Well, I'm happy to, I mean, I think the town gets a fantastic deal if all we're doing really is supplying some land. Yeah, I mean, it's and not, the land is not up. no value at this point other than to use for the rest of the okay. Well, we want, we want to have rescue in right. the best possible place. It's to our benefit to have Harvard Rescue in right there. Yeah. So, I don't know. But I mean, the land that they're expanding to yeah. really has no value other than to that building. So it's a no-brainer. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. yeah, I just wish that we knew what we were doing with the town garage to coordinate. But we don't. So, what's your um, what's your hopeful timeline? Well, <laughs> we need a design, yep. and then we need to have a capital campaign. That's how we are proposing to do it. We're not asking the towns necessarily for money, but we we service eight different towns, so we'd like to get somebody in each of those towns to uh, circulate fundraising material. Grants or whatever we can do. We have no idea how to run a capital campaign, but we're going to find out. And there's some folks that I've already spoken with who are willing to help us for that project. Yeah. What's the projected What's that? dollars on the so They don't have a design yet, so they don't know. So we can get Could Could there be, um, kind of on Eric's point, with the design um, and the engineering of the building? Uh, would Harvard Rescue be willing to be in conversation with the town about of course. creating a complex there and designing that building in a way that we could we could add on to it? Or be next to it in or a logical way? Like, yeah. for example, in this concept drawing, I think there's a retaining wall showing that side, right? that side, but maybe it makes more sense for that retaining wall to keep extending 
straight instead of curving back by the right. existing I think we just, like that. that right. might, we, we need to keep in mind when we design that we yeah. want to be able to utilize. We want to do the same thing only about another 300 feet. Yeah. Yeah. And there's okay. some, there's right. some, there's some there could be some shared space. Oh, yeah. The yeah. bigger training room. Yeah. I think that retaining wall is coming back because you're going into the bank. Yeah. Right. So, in order for that retaining wall to be gone, you'd have to cut out the entire place out behind the town garage. But we right, might, but if we put a new town garage, so, right. we I mean, might need to go back there. I mean, let's do that. I don't we know. can work that out. So, I, we need a motion to tell them to go ahead. No, I'd say you make a motion to amend the current lease to but accommodate we, the building improvements and size requirements along those lines. Right? Does that make Well, I said so. Yes. Can I just jump in really quick, too? With, so, it sounds like you're not. You're not looking to break ground this season. Oh no, not at all. So, no, need to have a design so does it make sense before even doing that to basically have the next step be, okay, they're working on this. Now we need to work on. I know we we've been a little busy the past couple of weeks, especially Tom, but maybe this puts a fire under us to really figure out the town garage, which we really need to. And maybe. Yeah, but we're gonna. We're, well, no, this. But maybe I'm just saying maybe this, like this is a reason for us as the select board. This is different from the motion, but us as a select board to figure out at least the town garage building, if that is in a different place in that in that site, then that could potentially benefit where right. this addition happens. So I'm just saying, I think we can approve that motion, but also have us really think about if we maybe have a year and a half, two years, um, we could potentially fit. Yeah. If we, if we wanted to be on their timeline, that means that we need to also be looking for a design. Yeah, we'll be on their timeline. And, and, and we also, we, yeah, were, we were struggling with a decision that was just made for us. Yeah. About whether the to move or not. Yeah, right. and we're not. So we're, we're definitely rebuilding here. So I, I think this is definitely doable to be able to work with Harvard Rescue. I'd be really happy if we started digging in spring. Yeah. And we certainly want to be in conversation with you. Right. Oh, yeah. you guys are doing right, 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 right. Okay. So, does the motion need a second, or do we do that? So, just so I'm clear, what is the motion? <laughs> and then the current lease to accommodate the Harvard Rescue Building expansion as presented. Okay, and so the thing is that, well, that'll probably morph a little bit over time, like the exact footprint that you right. guys need. That's necessary. So, so we'll, we'll finalize it at some later point. So wait, so that was, so the motion's fine, so. This motion, I yeah, second. You're going to second. Any other discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Andy, please say aye. 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 Um, Thank you. Yeah, well, yeah. Thank happy you. to have you guys and have what you need. I, it would be great if we could get up to speed and be closer to your schedule. We'll see. Well, get your ideas out, you'll have to. <laughs> <laughs> we can work together. Okay. Thanks a lot. Yeah. Um, all right, so uh, where are we? Five. 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 Civic standard to discuss um, grant application they have pending, uh, and they need permission to use the peak. Peace Park for some events. Oh, you're using the Peace Park. Anyway, yeah. go ahead. For forgiveness. Are you asking <laughs> <laughs> for forgiveness? Um, well, I originally asked to be added to the agenda for a couple of reasons. One is that we're applying for a Better Places matching grant, which is, um, you know, it's basically you raise five thousand dollars through like crowdfunding, and then they give you ten, um, and it's it's like a state program grant that. Um, it has a few different partners administering it. Anyway, things feel really different right now. We're not going forward with that grant at this point. We have all the pre-approvals in place to do it, and I think if we wanted to sort of alter a little bit what that grant proposal was, they would be happy to work with us on that, but we're not there right now. The other reason why I asked to be on the agenda is just to say that it was like basically exactly a year ago that we came in and asked for the ARPA funding. Um, and I just kind of felt like we asked for a year of ARPA funding and I wanted to give a little one year follow up report to say like, thank you for that funding. Um, it has made everything possible for our organization. It has been our foundation um, that has allowed us to do everything that we've done so far. Um, 
But now we're here because of the events of the last week. Um, we're here instead to, to sort of give a little uh, report about the fact that yes, we are using the park quite heavily right now um, for, for nightly dinners. Um, and those are about to switch to, I think, a weekly schedule, Wednesday night suppers there. Um, and we'll continue doing these meals that kind of go out uh, to folks in need. Um, so we've sort of developed a, a little bit of a, a system of our own devising um, to send out homemade meals to the work sites where um, there's volunteer crews actively working to help people clean up their houses. Um, and also to the people who are living at those houses. Um, and that, those numbers seem to be growing a little bit and there's a lot of volunteer exciting to, to help support that. Um, so that's, that's really all we had to share right now and if you have any questions for us or anything else we should be talking about. Um, I just, just a thought that if you do round back to the better places, yeah. we need to make sure Tracy knows that you're planning yes. to do that because there's a limit to the number. Yeah. 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 And East Hardwick has that better yeah. places. And I know we were looking at that for the park, for the Main Street start of, side of the park. Mm -hmm. The downtown partnership was looking at trying to do that. So yeah. I don't know if we wouldn't be able to do that. Yet. Yeah. He seemed to think that. Yeah, we wanted to make it work for everybody, but we just yeah. talked about okay. not overlapping too much. As long as Tracy knows, it's fine. Yeah, yeah. Then we can coordinate. So if you're using the park all the time, you must be taking care of the park as well. So that's a good thing. I think it's nice that I mean a lot of people a lot of people don't kind of don't see that park. I think you know don't it's like hidden somehow. So yeah. getting people in there is good. It's beautiful. Yeah. Down by the river, except when the river is threatening. Everything. <laughs> Except when the grin is rattling. Right, when the grin is rattling, it's a little unnerving. But other than that, it's pretty good. My only question about Rose is really more, I think, for us is that I just wanted, if you've noticed, sometimes that fence that um, is down by the river can look a little funky. Is there any, like, does it look safe and sound? I know sometimes there are like pieces randomly missing, but maybe that's, maybe I'm thinking like years ago, but that seems like a. I thought it was a split rail. It is, but it's sometimes like I might be thinking of a while ago. It's right. not always all the way along. Like there's an right. open section, and then yeah, use your own rest. <laughs> yeah, the edge. Which is a question right. if yeah. we need to add a little bit more. If there are a lot of people down there at night for a film. I I would just like to observe that neighbor to neighbor grew out of an emergency, the pandemic. Was the pandemic any, was it part of what drove you to create this organization? Because I'm, I'm thinking that these two neighbor, help your neighbor, help people that grew out of a pandemic emergency are now being really full force and important in dealing with a flood emergency. It's good you're there. Yeah, thanks for the update. Good job. Yeah. Uh, we have to, for, do we need to formally approve that they can use the Peace Park? You can use the Peace Park. There you go. <laughs> 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 Unless you want something else, you're already using it. Right. No, not yet. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, your sentence will be uh, committed. Communities, the community service picking up the face part. As long as you're willing to take care of it, you can have it. I just want to publicly thank the Civic Standard for um, the night of the flood. I reached out to you both and asked for your help, and it was all hands on deck. And it was through the shelter and through the week. And I really appreciate having uh, community organizations step up to the plate, and you guys hit a home run. So. Really appreciate that. Ooh, I appreciate that. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. 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 I definitely appreciate it too, even though just the day <laughs> that the flood started, I was down yeah. talking to Tara on the steps and I said, Oh, he's gonna open the emergency shelter. I don't think we probably need it, but he's right to open it. Yeah. I don't think it's gonna flood. 
So next, select board review and consider approving interim zoning bylaws due to the flooding. Do we know what those are? Well, we talked about them a little bit at the planning commission meeting. This that was on this past Tuesday because it got rescheduled because it was the night after the flood. Um, and my understanding is somewhat limited, but I feel like it's oh. similar in some ways. Here she is. Hi, Kristen. Too late. You're just don't even sit down. Jerry was so, just taking the we floor. don't have the interim rules yet. Okay, oh. perfect. I'm going to need a special meeting. Oh, right. fair enough. Once we get them. <laughs> but there'll be another thing where, which is a um, uh, temporary occupancy of a substantially damaged property, which will allow people to do what they need to do. So there's going to be two different policies they're going to need, and they're going to help facilitate people fixing their houses if they've been substantially damaged in the first place. Just let us know so it allows for that to be the processes to be expedited, much like that Act 250 much like the thing. Much the treatment we got last night. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> Damn. Nice to do the treatment we got last night. Hey, hey. Oh, what? Yeah. Okay. Um, all right. So we don't need to do Thanks. anything for you tonight. Well, I'm here for the next few days. <laughs> all right. Oh, but for that, we don't have the zoning. No, tonight I don't have, I might be on my email, but I haven't had a chance to look at it, and I'm not going to present something I haven't had a chance to look at. Yeah, sounds good. Because they were still running it by the, getting it vetted by the um, lawyers. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they were still running it by the lawyers. Okay. Yeah, they Moving along, item seven, select board to consider appointing Sherry Cornish, Ken Davis, and one other person to this <laughs> another <laughs> three-year term on the planning commission. Well, I probably should say another, it's only another person, Sherry, and another for that, and then you guys tabled the four applicants from earlier. Um, people that wanted to arrive, right. just said they're stupid. In July, we'll be the other two that are already on. We have a vacancy in the planning commission, and we have four people that So we have four for one, and these are renewals. Correct. Mm -hmm. But. Um, right, but so ultimately we have three, I mean, three seats. We, we, we have six. We have six applicants for three seats. You're right. Okay. Yes. And the first one in the packet group um, pulled his, or the second one in the packet pulled his request to be appointed. Who was that? Rob. Okay. All right. Rob? So then it's five candidates for three positions. May I um, ask you guys what the information? So one of the applicants is Cole, mm -hmm. who is also on Cole here. But I'm not flat. okay. Cole has also asked to be to be continue on the um, DRB. And as you know, you have a policy that precludes people from serving on both. Mm -hmm. However, the language of your policy would indicate that Cole could serve as a full member on the DRB and as an alternate alternate member on your um, your planning commission. And I ran it by your by the chair of the planning commission, he thought that was a great idea. They've been coming to meetings and they can really give a different perspective of what it's, what happens at the DRB meetings definitely, um, definitely gives an idea as to what, how the zoning bylaws are working or not working. And Chris, can you remind us, so we're, we've got three open seats, but then how many alternates can we? We can have two or three alternates. I would highly recommend that if you're going to put one person, if you pick, that your other two go to alternate, is what I would highly recommend. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. you've got you've got five people here who are willing yeah. to serve. Mm -hmm. We've got lots on our plate, having additional voices at the table and helping, and then serving in a capacity where they could fill in if you need a quorum, mm -hmm. is to the benefit of the town and to the, the knowledge base that we have. I have a lot of questions about this. But the, the, so the alternate, the alternate, is that something new because I have never heard you can, of No, you guys have done alternates in the past. I haven't looked. Back in 2014, 2015. We just haven't had them since then because we haven't had enough numbers. Yeah. We, we haven't had, had enough people ourselves. asking to be on it. I mean, they do it with the yeah. Solid Waste District. We have alternates for the board NBDA. members there. You guys used to do it. 
and just and MBA. Just so I understand, Kristen, because I'm new to this. I was thinking so, an alternate town manager. Yeah. <laughs> So if you're an alternate, you can still obviously attend the meetings because they're public. But yeah. but if the quorum is full, an alternate cannot vote if there's Correct. a quorum. Right. Correct. Right. So it's and your policy says your policy says <laughs> well, that you can't you can't actively serve. The word actively would indicate that you're a full member. Alternates okay. only serve in the in the if there's a, an emergency, and you actually can do the same thing. Like if you don't have a quorum for your DRB or for your planning commission because of a conflict of interest, you can pull from the other one. Um, so there's the same kind of idea. You, you're, it's just, I mean, going with the language of what you're trying, I understand what you guys are trying to do. You're trying to keep them separate. Um, but I think there's a knowledge base that's getting lost by not having someone who serves them both. And Sh I, I, Sherry can speak. Uh, Cole was there the other night and was able to give give information yep. about how it's processing in the, at the DRB. Danny, you're shaking your head. What do you want to know? Yeah, no, yeah. No? no? I, don't, I don't understand the you know, alternate thing. I understand. Why not? Oh, alternates. You can have as many alternates as you yeah, want. I don't. You don't like alternates? Why? <laughs> as the person who's constantly trying to make sure I've got a forum yes. for everything? I, I understand that. So you, but I, I don't understand. So what's the alternate to do? Just show up and participate and, and just hope that somebody else don't show up? And an, just an, 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 an alternate would be. You're the alternate for Sherry, right? If she can't right, make it to the, so that's right. like a communication. They'd be authorized to, to vote on an issue in the absence of a, a regular member. And you, you appoint one first alternate and one second alternate. Yeah, right. I don't feel it on the way to Okay. And it doesn't, the person. It looks like this desk here. Yeah, so well, if you're an alternate, you don't automatically, like when the, if an open term comes up, yeah, you don't automatically move into that spot. You are the alternate. You can apply for that spot, but you don't automatically move into that spot. You might serve as that spot until you guys appoint someone. Does that make sense? Which Huh? I don't know. What? No. Did, is Do they get the stipend? They the, don't get the yeah. stipend. Unless they, there's a $20 stipend. Oh, yeah. Per meeting. Well, can we do this I all maybe twenty late? Can we get like a hundred bucks every month? I see. I see. It's, it's, it's all three. Is it all three-year terms? Yeah, no, I guess. Yes, but she's seen certain years terms. The other seat is three-year or two years remaining. Okay. And Fred, Sherry and Ken are asking for re-up on the, those seats are re, the, are the three year. Nobody else is a technical runner for those seats. Right. Right. So I motion to appoint Sherry Cornish and Ken Davis to the Planning Commission for the two three year seats. Yes. Reappointment. Reappointment. No. Reappointment. Okay. Are we doing those separately? Is that the whole seats? motion? Do we, do we just keep going? Sure. I can just keep going. Okay. Um, I'm interested to see where you're going. <laughs> yeah, I'm interested. Yeah. Yeah. Just so, uh, 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 I'd also like to motion to appoint uh, Larry Flegelman to the three year term with the two years left. Right? I want to make sure I just get it right. That's the, the three year term with two years left. And then I'd also like to motion to appoint Cole. Uh, Cole's last name. It's Cole. Just Cole. Uh, Cole um, to be the uh, number one alternate. Mm -hmm. And then. Mm -hmm. What? Two, 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 two. Them, sorry, sorry. To them. Second. Alternate. Second alternate. Um, and <laughs> I would like to appoint Bud Stevens to be an alternate for the planning first. First, al first alternate. It's pushing further away from the. Okay. From the board makes it more likely that the division you guys are trying to accomplish. Yes, thank you. Sure. Second. Can I start to back? Sure. I got that. Um, well, so reappoint Sherry and Ken to three year terms, appoint Larry to a three year, two years remaining, and appoint Bud Hayes, the first alternate, holds the second alternate, is that correct? Bud Stevens. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought it was Buddy. Yeah. There is a Buddy. Yeah. Oh, that's probably why. It's Buddy, actually. 
So, sorry, you made a motion. Do we have a second? Yes. We had a second. Discussion? <laughs> All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye, I guess. <laughs> okay. Motion yeah, carries. We've got to do better the next time. This, this is not good. Okay. Uh, the process is very slow. All right. Next is select item eight, select board to consider um, appointing John Mandeville and Cole to three-year terms on the DRB. So we have two three-year terms open on the yes. DRB. They both serve on there currently. They're both asking. They're both asking to be reappointed. We don't have any other right. interest. Motion to approve the appointment of Cole and John Mandeville to the. DRB uh, seats, reappoint them. Second. Any discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Um, may, I, may I say one thing, one thing before yes. we go? Yes. Um, DRB is only at five right now. So we need more DRB. We need more DRB, and with the flood, we are going to have, even if we adopt interim rules, we are going to have a lot of, <coughs> a lot of hearings with the DRB. Um, please, if you know anyone who's even considering it, mm -hmm. go behind. They have fun. They learn lots of things. But on all, we don't have enough members, so we can't. We can't, we can't jump Is this what you're talking about, Danny? We <laughs> could try, though. That was good. That's great. Yeah, that's great. I like that. Good job. I mean, that's what I'm going to have to do. I'm going to have to pull from planning if I. See, if you've done it differently. Well, no, Chris already said that if there Kristen are not enough numbers of DRB, then you can't pull from any Everybody, everybody is given the option of going to DRB. So you can do either. Plans. Oh, okay. Yeah. There was, this was a cognizant. Okay. Every single person. All right. All right. All right. Fair enough. Okay. All right. So that's my next. Oh, Great. It's not good. Mando. Next, uh, select board consider appointing two people uh, as Hardwick Electric Commissioners. Um, we have uh, one year, one two year term and one three year term that are up, and we have several candidates, and we have uh, we have a slot for an executive session to discuss appointment of public officer at the end of our meeting tonight. But we do have folks here who are interested in that uh, role. There folks so everybody submitted letters that we read um, and I will start with Lynn Gedankin if you'd like to say anything to us um, that'd be great just because you're already serving um, I think if you have any questions I mean I, yeah. I think I know all of you and right. uh, been on the board for some time and uh, concerning as chair of the board um, love to see somebody else move into that eventually, right. uh, but uh, haven't had success twisting any arms. Uh, but if you have any questions, I'm happy to answer them. Questions for Lynn. I just want to say thank you, Lynn. Your letter was really specific about some of the things that you've done in your 10 years at AGB, so it was nice to see that. 10 years? Doesn't seem that long enough. All right. Thank you, Lynn. Uh, uh, moving around, Peter, uh, can you like say hello? Sure. I'm uh, Peter Watkinson. Uh, my wife and I moved into Greensboro full time in November of 2021. Um, uh, you want a little about my background? Or just why you're, yeah, why you're interested in Harvard Electric? Oh, sure. Um, so I have. Uh, quite a bit of interest in clean energy and climate change. Um, back in 2009, I made a transition. I had a career in sales and business development, and I made a transition into that space. I studied uh, those subjects for about a year on my own through the universities down in, in Boston, and then ultimately ended up directing uh, the U.S. solar business for Schneider Electric, which is a global multinational. So we were, uh, my team was basically building, um, supporting the build of utility scale solar projects 
in the eastern uh, U.S., also down in Puerto Rico and up in Ontario. Um, these are big projects. So in Ontario, we were doing 100 megawatt projects. Um, and our key product in that system was the inverter, which is the most complicated piece of, of a solar project. So I have some subject matter knowledge because I was working with utilities, but I've never worked for a utility. Um, and uh, we love being here. We, we really love being on the plateau. And I think of that not just as Greensboro, where we ended up landing, but uh, we really love Hardwick, we love Craftsbury, we bike everywhere, we ski everywhere. And uh, in some of the work that I've done from a volunteer standpoint here, I've found that when you're part of a regional organization as opposed to a town organization, um, for me it's a richer experience. Um, I'm on a land trust that's responsible for seven different towns, as well as towns outside that region. And it's been really fun to just break down town borders and be able to think about things regionally. So I'm particularly attracted to uh, Hardwick Electric Department um, because you're responsible for 11 towns. It's a much broader region. Um, I biked from Craftsbury to Elmore, so I've covered a lot of the territory that um, you're responsible for. Um, so anyway, for all of those reasons, I, uh, I feel that I have something to offer. I feel that I would have a lot to learn, um, not being part of the utility and understanding all of the things that HEB does for the region. Um, so that's a Great. brief introduction. Thank you. Questions for Peter? We're not very question -y tonight, okay. sorry. Uh, I just have a quick, very quick question. Go ahead. Peter, have you been able to join any of the commission meetings? Uh, yeah, I, matter of fact, I had looked at one a long time ago and I just watched January's, which was quite interesting understanding VIPSA and the involvement with VIPSA in that particular case. Um, VIPSA was basically saying that by 2032, their members, of which HED is one, um, needed to be 75% renewable and, and meet an RES standard. And um, it was interesting to just understand a little bit more about that discussion where HED was as part of that consortium of utilities that make up VIPSA. And then uh, one of the next topics was something that I think about a lot, which is as we transition from a more fossil fuel-based sourcing to a renewable sourcing, how, how does HEB add on capacity? So there was an interesting discussion about the yellow barn and bigger demands on HEB's capacity that were also interesting to think about and to watch the, uh, the board grapple with and the general manager grapple with. So yeah, I have had a chance to. Uh, and you remembered what happened at the meeting. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's 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 fascinating, and on one side, it's also, I think I understand some of the difficulties around regulations because we had to face those in the solar business. So it's not easy, but it is interesting. Any other questions for Peter? No. Thank you, Miles. Would you like to introduce yourself? Hi everyone. I'm Miles. Um, it's completely unfair to go after Peter. Not, not nearly as eloquent. Um, but uh, I moved um, into Hardwick uh, with my now fiance Lauren in 2020. We're in the process of building a house up on Putnam Avenue um, and excited to be putting down roots here. Um, interest in HED stems from my work. Um, I do nonprofit rural broadband consulting. Um, I work for an organization that's based in Heartland, Vermont, um, but we're a distributed team and our clients are across the country. Um, we have done a fair amount of work in the state um, with uh, public service department being my client multiple times. Um, through broadband work in rural places, I, I spend quite a bit of my days working um, with electric co-ops, small independent <coughs> utilities, some larger power providers, 
Um, but I, I enjoy the work. Um, not all of them are interested in broadband deployment, which is A-OK. -okay. I think there are a lot of capacity constraints that um, I see kind of across projects where it's an interesting intersection. Um, people are providing a central service. They're kind of often doing it um, without all the resources they need. Um, sometimes they don't have all the support they need. Um, if I can uh, be an asset to this town and supporting our independent power provider, I'd be excited to do so. Um, also through my work, I spend a lot of time um, dealing with the various and often competing interests um, after the pole attachment, pole rights, right ways. Um, it's a space that can be pretty boring, but I find it somewhat interesting. Um, and if I can bring any of that experience to bear, I'd be happy to do so. I was just going to ask the same thing, Matt. So you've been able to go to <laughs> Same thing. YouTube's been my friend. Yeah. <laughs> uh, any other questions for Miles? No. Yeah, Vince emailed us about calling in. Vince did email about calling in. But he also was checking on a battery somewhere in Crossbury. Library. We library battery. Yeah. And we know Vince. All right. So we're going to deliberate at the end of our meeting tonight, and we'll let you all know. Uh, short, uh, the town manager will let you know shortly afterwards. Yeah? Yeah. 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 OK. Thank you. Thanks appreciate appreciate, appreciate your the interest for sure. Yeah, and that you came in. It's Thank important. Um, all right. Next up is uh, item 10, discussion. Uh, about Far Street and Buffalo Mountain Road. Why are we? What are we? Okay. Um, well, Far Street is privately owned, and um, we take care of it. We have been for a really long time, and I just wanted to let you know that there's. Um, Go ahead. It's privately owned. Yeah. The, the one that summer, spring, yeah. summer, far, yeah. and winter. Yeah, it, it's on private property. And it was never right. laid out as a road? Right. Is it access <clears throat> to the houses they use it as a driveway? They have a right of way? Uh, no. No. Oh, boy. So um, there's, oh, there's potential of it um, being changing hands. Yep. Um, and I want to make sure that the, uh, the, the previous owner um, has worked with the town and has been allowed the path, you know, allowed the movement of the residents there. And if there is a new owner um, new to town, I don't want to have any problems. I want to kind of nip this one in the bud before it becomes a problem. So I just want to let you know make you aware of that and maybe come up with a plan to be able to make that a public right away also um, we need to think about what we're going to do with buffalo mountain trail um, the maintenance of that um, we've great we've graded it once this year uh, the state next year is gonna uh, come in and do the apron to that um, there's several residents there and a business there um, and I want to make sure that they are getting the same services that other businesses so, and residents yeah, get. So that's, that's in my mind kind of really easy. We need to make yeah. that last street to put it in yeah. Buffalo Mountain. The other one, I need to know quite a bit more about it. Right, this is just me letting you yeah. know what's going on like this, and I want to make, I, I want to put it on your radar. And, right. and this is something I was. That was a street, that's why. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I thought it was a street too. There's what, one, two, three? Well, there's access, it's a through street. Like it's a through, like oh, you can right. get you go down to Kellogg right. Street. You know Williams is? You got the little house behind the help rents, and you got help rents. And you got Carolyn Lowe's, two offices. And then you have, like. Oh, that White House. P. Johnson owns that. Yep. Yeah. There's two houses in the back. back. Those two houses in the back also have access off of Kellogg Street. So that's their access. There's one driveway and then one roadway that right. so everybody uses. Sounds to me like that's uh, quite a little mess you got yourself into there. 
I didn't get myself. <laughs> I'm trying not to have a mess. Right. Yeah. Right. I so it. we can have discussions. And if, you know, I'd like to. So who owns the down between Carol and Willie's and Pete Johnson? They own that? Yes. Right up to the house? Yeah, pretty much. So Pete Johnson owns that. He has no parking, he has no back access. Correct. He, well, he does on his property. Walking, not a driveway. No, there's there's a there's there's, no a, there's two places to park or one and a half. In front. But he's putting several apartments in there. They're going to be very small apartments. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, make that big. So, um, Pete Johnson is in Pete Street. Yep. Is it slum lord now? Came after the. Uh, hmm. I say it's slum lord now. Or he's providing yeah. housing. Or he's providing housing. It doesn't look very good. It doesn't sound like very good to provide housing if there's no access. No well, it sounds like it's an issue for a lot of buildings there. I don't know. I, in my mind, I'm not having as easy a time picturing it as you are. I know where it is, but I can't. I think you should go. I think you should go check it out. Okay. And so. I think you should also. Um, potentially make contact with the, the landowner. What do we have to do with this? Like, that Gather some more information. But what's our responsibility? Well, well ultimately your responsibility reason. and the town's responsibility is to um, create a... Why is this not a deeded right-of-way that they maintain themselves? I think it was um, historically I think it was a you know relatives, family that all lived handshake. around there and they um, I, I don't know the history. Yeah. So are you saying that we're involved. responsible for it because we've taken care of it over the years? We're I don't know. Responsible. We, are, we are not responsible for it, but we have been taking care of it. So we, I understand we'd like oh, we to have. fix this. But yeah. I missed that in the beginning. I thought no, we, we, had not. we have been yeah. taking care yeah, of it. So we yeah. plow it. Yes. It's, it's considered a street. I, I know. There's but a sign and everything. The top I part is privately owned. Wow. The top part. Yeah. So basically what you're telling us is that we should make ourselves familiar with that area yep. and with those landowners and eventually we're going to have to make that officially a street, but not tonight. With, with negotiations with, with negotiations. the current landowner. Right. Or the future landowner, whatever mm -hmm. you guys decide. But yeah, but I don't know why we want to do that. I don't want to. Well, we need to learn more about it. And yeah. see what we well, we provide, the thing is, is, my train of thought is we've provided a service for the residents there for so long that they've come to expect it. Yeah. And so we can, in, in, you know, the way things work in the world is yeah, to take something away yeah. is harder. It's harder. It sounds like it's a, it's a right dispute on the horizon. We're so trying, yes. I'm trying to trying get to ahead it. of the dispute. Yeah. Right, right, but I don't know what you have. <laughs> well, there's no dispute. Yeah. But there, there, there is some, there could be some, you there's know, concern. There's concern. There's so. concern, for sure. Right. So maybe there's Should we speak. plan a field trip? Sounds like we I should probably plan, plan uh, yeah. a site visit. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> I think. Oh, gosh. Well, you're the only one of us who seems to be able to say there's this house, this house, and the other house. So I know that. I understand the fact that I'm having trouble with the whole, if it's not a road, it's not a street, it's not a street. But if it's, okay, it's let me spin it the other way. It is, I, I don't know the, the, I don't, I haven't seen the deed, so I don't know if there's right, right away in it or not. I, mean, that's, I don't believe so there is. So that's probably, yeah, I mean, I, I that would be part of the process. Somebody needs to do some research. I don't have to see some legal. Yeah. I mean, I'm not against it, but it's very small, very congested. We're already plowing it. Darren knows it's. We feel a lot of complaints. We feel complaints about snow removal there everywhere when we have a big snow load, snow dump. So. Well, that's right. That's we can eliminate that by not doing. But he's saying we're already plowing it, so it wouldn't be any different. Well, yeah. The people there probably would expect it. Yeah. Well. Okay. Doesn't sound like we're going to resolve this tonight, no. but no. I think we could Just resolve to make a field, make a plans some, for a field trip and do we can some have investigation. I mean, it's possible that the landowners there and the public meeting discussion. Or? I I think you could probably just seek out the the landowners individually, or I can put you in touch with them, and maybe you can have a phone conversation with them. 
Um, we got I just realized that down. clock is not right, is it? No, no it hasn't been right for money for many meeting. months. How's it going? 740. Oh, it's close, isn't it? Right. It'll be right in about five minutes. <laughs> right. Oh, no. The, uh, it will uh, not. Hour slow. So, I don't know. It was right about an hour, about 55 minutes ago. So Vince is on. I don't know. Oh, so right. so, want to know. All right. So, sorry. So, we're going to wrap up item 10 then. It's just, this is for our information, correct, Mr. Upson? Yeah. We're wrapping up item 10. That was right. You yeah. guys are the ends of the table here tonight. Sorry. Um, okay. There's no action needed. I'm right. Just making you aware. I'm going to move us back to item, even though we finished item nine, because Vince has joined us on the Zoom. Um, and Vince, uh, we, we talked to every, everybody else who's here, but um, so we'll give you the same uh, opportunity. Would you like to? Just say hello to us if there's anything you want to tell us uh, about why you want to continue with Harvest Electric, and then we might ask you a question. You're on mute. I'm mute. There we go. Okay, great. You can hear me okay now? Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, uh, yes, and with that, Repeating the things I said, and you got the information I sent, correct? Yeah, yeah, we got your letter. Thank you. Okay, great. Yeah. Well, thanks for reading it. Um, uh, yes, I mean, uh, you know, my personal interest is in assisting or providing some information or background about uh, grid transition, you know, about renewable energy stuff. But, uh, you know, I've learned a lot. And uh, it's been really interesting, and uh, I feel productive working with uh, with the other, other commissioners. Uh, let's see, just some context. Like right now, I'm at a neighbor's house right near the library. But our, in 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 the interest of providing the kind of re resilience that we're talking about, you know, which is pretty topical right now. Um, I put in a solar and storage system at the Crassbury Library. And it's working perfectly, and we commissioned it and had a demonstration two days before the rain, and then the basement flooded the, and flooded the battery, <laughs> which is pretty weird. Anyway, got, got that working. But um, I can't think of anything else except that it's uh, uh, providing some consistency and um, you know, being having become familiar with the the structure, the structure of, of uh, utility regulation in Vermont, uh, federal energy regulation, um, all the money available for different types of programs. Yeah, I mean, it, it continues to be interesting, and I feel like uh, I would like to attempt to be continue to be a productive part of uh, like. Uh, of, uh, I guess it's civil society. Excellent. Uh, thank you. Uh, questions for Vince? Anyone? Hearing none. Thank you. Oh, oh no. <laughs> no. Ask me anything. Well, uh, I'll ask you Kaylee's question. Have you been to a Harvard Electric meeting? <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so was I on time? Because I I, I, looked, uh, I looked at the agenda and it said 7:45, yeah, but it sounds like you guys had already passed that. Yeah, so we the, yeah, our times are always just estimates. We we're we we're, we were running a little ahead, um, although I was wrong because the clock I was looking at a broken clock. Um, but we uh, so the select board we have. Um, several applicants for the two seats that are up and we're going to have a um, deliberative session at the end of our meeting to discuss and uh, everybody will hear from the town manager shortly thereafter so okay yeah great Th thank you thanks well, thank you you're we'll welcome see you guys yeah all right, so now we're jumping down to item 11, select board to review and consider approving the coin drop request for 2024, which is essentially the same coin drop schedule we've had before, I think. Similar, yeah, it's usually the same. Motion to approve the 2024 coin drop, make one is to and where July Harder Trails, August Harder Conservation Commission, September Harder Horse Historical Society, and October, free for the taking. 
<laughs> Second. Uh, any comments or discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Good luck with coin drops. Stay safe when you're standing in the road. Uh, item 12, select for to review and approve the audit engagement letter with Sullivan Powers and Company for fiscal year 23 audit services. Uh, which to approve the engagement letter and authorize something to sign it. Wow. That was, that was quick. Second. Yeah. Um, all right. And just for the record, that is, it's like 30 something thousand plus something. 29,000 and then another like six or 6,500 for the single audit. And then it said another four for any additional audit, a single audits. Why would we need, sorry to derail this, but why would we need more than one? No, I it's just language. Yeah, I think it's just to cover that, but I'm not aware of any additional audit that we would need besides the single. Yeah, okay. All right. And the single, yeah. Were they the only ones that we went out to bid? And uh, they were yeah, we, we tried to, we looked last year, just because mm -hmm. we had them for a long yep. time, we thought we should yes. check. Um, they were the only ones that bid. I was I sent out to five people. Um, but the nice thing was is that we got a fixed price for three years, so that was helpful. Yeah. So, hmm. yeah. Oh, so this is nobody wants to take on new clients right now. Nobody can really. So yeah. yeah. So, I mean, we're Still not happy with Sullivan Powers at all. No. Like, right. Just um, we we thought part we of our due diligence. Just every once in a while, put it out. And just nobody else wanted it, so we didn't get anything All right. Oh. So Danny made the motion. Somebody I missed. Have a question. Uh, Mr. Sullivan. I'm just wondering what, what are the requirements for your guys? Are your requirements the same as our requirements for the gas yeah, be standards on that? It is. Yes. Because there aren't many providers out there. No. No, that's the thing I said. I sent out uh, our piece to five different places, including them, and that's it. We got only that. I'm just curious. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so we're basically shopping for the same service. Yep. Oh, we have to bring that up. Yeah, now, and now, now since you brought it up, the odds are not the same every year. Every year, <laughs> every year we get, it says we audited the town, we audited the, uh, the water fund, but we cannot right. offer the electric fund. Ours is a regulatory requirement. All right. All right. Unless we did a second one. Correct, right. that's, that's what we have to be done. I was just wondering if it's the same auditor pool that we're both looking at, whether there would be any economies of scale or anything. No, I, yeah. I reached out to all, including Solid Powers, multiple times. And it's quite there's, a racket they have. There is nothing. Yeah. No, but I, I just, just <laughs> hope they were getting two pieces of business, because it's they're separate they? audits. Yep. But at once, whether there might be some mutual savings. Same amount of work for them, I think. Yeah, yeah. yeah. maybe now. Yeah. All right. Oh. Sorry. All right. Let's do it. Uh, sorry, so we had a motion, and do we have a second? Second. Yeah, second. Uh, any more discussion on engaging the Sullivan Towers? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. Motion carries. And uh, there are a lot of lines to sign, so I guess we yeah, pass this around. We should all sign it. Yeah. I'm passing this way first. Um, where are we? 13. Next, 13. Select board to complete USDA resolutions for the library's $600,000. Uh, grant which came through as congressionally congressionally delegated spending uh, funds formerly known as earmarks coming through the USDA um, and we need is there there's a document on the resolution and what this is is basically saying that um, as part of this project we did a public audit and we want to do a second Right. I did read it, but what's the title on the top? It's a long resolution for public bodies. So, 
Could we have a motion to approve the loan resolution uh, as provided by USDA? So moved. Second. Any discussion on that? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Next, select board reports. Um, on August 2nd at the townhouse, um, we have the uh, LVRT regional amenity scoping study presentation. It's the second public engagement for this deal. This is the scoping study that we did as a region with NBDA did for us. And um, the, Anyway, it's a, they're, they split it up, so it's not going to be quite as long. But of course, this is all still planning that still needs to happen because even though uh, the LVRT is currently closed, um, we will still continue to work on those trailheads. And yeah, it'll, yeah, so it's a positive thing. They're going to present all the plans that we have, the scope, all the stuff that they've done. In, we're hoping that we'll get a good crowd for people to see something positive that's still moving forward. I'll follow that with just a quick note that um, that our governor was here and showed the rail trail to um, Pete Buttigieg, who's our federal secretary of transportation, and stressed the importance of that. And Danny was over there. Danny was in the scrum oh, there for quite a while. Um, I had a scrum place the wrong time on that one. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, so we got a lot of, we, we got, we did end up getting a lot of uh, attention at the state and federal level uh, last week. The other thing I just want to, this is not exactly a select board report, but maybe sort of, um, been talking with uh, Opie and Casey about um, the, apparently the FEMA um, paperwork can be quite um, a, huge, a big task and so as a town we probably ought to hire somebody to do that somebody that you know Casey does a lot of our stuff but she has a full-time job doing our stuff already yep. this is gonna be a whole nother thing and so and there's um, when we submit FEMA reimburses for that so um, we're hoping. I agree, 100%. The other thing that I was thinking about was uh, the road to is uh, with the is going to go around for the next few months. That Tommy doesn't want to ask for help, but like okay, there's a lot of work to be done to repair that road to my You know what I'm saying? And there's going to sort be of pressure, and there's going sort to of be projects, and towers, and bridges. And we're still seeking outside help yeah. for, for projects. Yeah. Sure. But we're looking into the fee stuff for major procurement requirements for that stuff. So yeah. it'd Does be MBDA great to have anybody to before. offer for that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. MBDA have anybody so, to offer for that kind of thing? Uh, they've so given us a name. They've given us a name. We have a couple others. We have a couple names. And Allison also sent an email. Allison Lowe from MBDA sent an email to. Um, I don't remember if she's director, but the Vermont Emergency Management Group um, asking them about their capacity um, to help because they apparently have a few people who can help towns. It's not entirely clear that they can provide as much help as uh, as, as we need. So we're, we're still, we hear back, but in the meantime, um, we have a few names of folks who are experienced and uh, yeah, with the road crew, I was talking things like maybe the Bowen and yeah, you know yeah. I'm saying the yeah. and stuff. And, you know, like it, right out. now it's more valuable in the dump truck than he is more on the lot. And for the, at least for the consultant, I need to pull up our camera policy, but there should be some emergency provisions in there which will allow us to get the consultant without going through the whole RFP process because yeah. we don't have time for that, really. No, no. <laughs> So I need to pull out. Okay, so yeah, I'll take a look at that. But yes. Um. Do we need to make a decision, a formal decision, about that soon? 
No, that's something that's going to come out of the town manager's office, and they're already chasing it. That's great. Um. All right, I just want a quick report. Um, the, I just want to let everybody know that if you want to do something fun this weekend, uh, the Town of Glover Equity Committee is uh, putting together a Freedom Festival, which is um, going to has a huge, awesome slate of different people who are presenting. Um, it's at 12 p.m. at the Glover School. Um, and there is going to be a complimentary pizza by Parker Pie and cheese by Jasper Hill. So it's going to be really fun. The Hardwick Equity Committee wanted to let you know, so we're trying to partner with the Glover Equity Committee. Good job. Saturday at noon. Where is it? At the Glover School. This Saturday? This it's Saturday. Like seven and yeah, yeah, it's like all day. Oh, wow. yeah. yeah. It's very good. Yeah. Yeah. My report is I definitely had a good discussion with the secretary and the governor, just the three of us, and um, filled them in on you know, the rail trail, the value that uh, even if they was wrong. <laughs> um, so that was good, and the governor assured us that we were there, that there would be a declaration of value in the county. Need to do our due diligence, get the report, the damage, and make it happen. Danny, can you speak up a little bit? I cannot hear you. Oh, well. sorry. sorry. Anyway, that, that just at that, my discussion with the governor and the secretary were very positive, and I, I told them about the impact of the LBRT. Um, and it was real, and it was it was just starting to surface, so they seemed deeply concerned about that. But we felt as like the governor is a huge advocate of it, so. Um, but the damage is just a couple of hairs beyond catastrophic, so yeah. it's not going to be a quick fix and people should keep their positive attitudes and try to utilize what's available and safe. Um, yeah, the, the part of the beauty of it is we, by the time it's fixed, we may have all our trailheads all in place and, and it'll be fabulous so we, that people we, Art, all the signs will be there and everything will be, you know, set the way it should have been in the beginning. Uh, and we'll get people back downtown again. It was nice seeing so many bikes yeah. downtown. Right. Mm -hmm. all, right. all right, any other select board reports, new business, old business? Um, I suppose this is the new business thing, but I just feel like, you know, we had one actual, one. Maybe we should schedule a, another select board meeting for next week, but could we, where we can focus on some of the specific stuff around what we know now about the flood, what we know now about the the need to do make changes on Creamery Road, um, sort of like our retreat was, where we can kind of dig into some of those things and talk about uh, financial this, priorities. Yeah, all that stuff. I mean, we just yeah, we can't do it. I think yeah, a retreat so would be good. Hmm? I think a retreat would be good. Uh, 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 no retreat. <laughs> full steam ahead. Uh, yeah, full steam ahead. No retreating. No retreat. <laughs> but it may be that we could do. I mean, we have a productive meeting. I, I'm all for it. Like we have plenty of time I think, yeah. um, but I don't know. So we have. I I feel like we have looming. I mean, what we suggested it a couple times. We probably we're probably outlaid. On the order of three hundred thousand, roughly, in the last week, it sounds like, right? Yeah. And so, and oh, pretty much all of that wasn't in our budget. Right. I mean, right? And um, so, I don't know when is a good time, like from Casey's perspective, when you feel like you have, like, this is a pretty good picture of what we've spent over the last two weeks. I don't know how much time we want to. Give that, but at some point, I think we need to step, look at that and consider. I also have no idea what the FEMA timeline is. Like, how, like how long are we going to be holding that, and which things are going to be reimbursable, and you know, uh, should, should we? Should work? That's why I think it's important. I, also, I think the FEMA consultant will be able to tell us a lot of that because I've been through it. Mm -hmm. But I have also heard I talked to a select board member from Derby who talked about. Speak up a little bit. Oh, <laughs> I talked to the select board member from Derby recently. That said that they just got paid from FEMA for something 
five years ago. <laughs> like, no, I, don't tell me that, please. That's I don't want to hear that. But um, we're getting money from the Christmas storm at the end of last year. Sometime. So we've been through the whole process and we're waiting. So, so it's it's almost, almost eight months. Yeah, I, I definitely think it's. Well, I don't want to say a concern. Well, so we have a fund balance. We're very fortunate in that sense because we are. there's a really good chance that we're not going to get any of the year. Yeah. I right. think there's a really good chance we're not going to get our money back so this fiscal year. Yeah, right. I mean, <laughs> they they have to make. I'm sure there there is some prepayment or you know they got to do something. Every town's the same. No, oh, most towns don't have a fund balance. You know, I was talking still about to do the work, right? So. And a lot of towns are already thinking about short term borrowing. Yes. What you have to do for things. Yes. So that's why I say Hardwick is in a very fortunate position to have a fund balance where we can front these costs. And, and this is why we have a fund balance. This mm -hmm. is. I mean, exactly. now we're optimistic that we're going to get it back, but we may have to sit on it for so a year. It, it just seems like waiting for the next select board meeting is a little too long given what's happening and for us to all be together so that OP doesn't have to try to uh, communicate stuff to us separately. I mean, it's just... So I also don't want to create any extra burden on the staff who are actually doing most of the work. But if it's helpful, right, would you, would you like... You, you know how much I love meeting. <laughs> I mean, it doesn't have to be Most of us can meet, meet exactly. Most of us morning. can meet during the day, too. Oh, yeah. Right. Yeah, I definitely so, I don't know, if it's helpful, we can, can we, we, can we, we get, can we, we'll talk, I'll talk to my staff, where it is. we'll figure out where our invoices are. We, we need two days warning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. so we can, right. we can definitely. So, we're saying we're available. To do it if you're right. okay with it, we'll so the select boards, day. the select boards available to meet as needed during the day or night. During the day or night, and um, and so we just need. I also think so. Like when you're thinking update of figures and stuff, honestly, every most of our invoices are net thirty. I mean, right. You know, and so the storm happened the tenth into the eleventh. I'm just starting to get invoices now. Um, we do a key by weekly. Realistically, I'm thinking at the second meeting in August, which I will be at, is when I would really have a handle on what we've paid out. Okay. I mean, it'll be a fast enough, but we're just estimating materials, shopping, yeah, hours, whatever, but, you know, we still have to purchase a lot of stuff for the wastewater plant. Right. Get all those, you know, costs in, and so I think Big at that problem. second meeting in August, I'll have a much more concrete because I'm separating all the flood expenses, um, and so it'll be very easy to just be like, okay, this is what we spent so far. So, thinking of the wastewater, um, you know, the town, has, the general fund has a fund balance, but the wastewater is a separate enterprise fund. Yeah. And how's that? So okay. I think those those get paid out of the, fund, of the sewer fund, which basically kind of has to come out of capital right now because we don't have it. There's nothing else. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And because our revenues just meet our expenses. Right. And but so we have the capital budget, is that? We have, there's money in the capital budget sufficient to cover the there is immediate expense? There is our next wave. Well, no, 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 not sufficient to cover everything, no. We still have this sludge cleanup project. This is not funding Unfortunately, the flood didn't take this much. I wouldn't have been good. added to it. It's more. So, um, that's uh, that's something too. And the to state, with. the state did not come through with extra funds for that project. Like I thought they, they did would. not. No. What did we get the email the day after? Oh yeah. Really, the day after the flood? Like, oh, by the way, yeah, we don't have anything for you. Yeah. Sorry. And they suggested doing the CRRP, which is that yep. revitalization. Yep. We've got revitalization, excuse me. Um, but we, they already told us, or somebody told us a while ago, that that wouldn't qualify because you had to have some sort of development project ready to go waiting for the sewer plan in order for that to be considered. Well, so, right now we have a whole town waiting for the sewer plan yeah. to come back <laughs> online. <laughs> I mean, it is partially, but. That's a little bit of a blow. That, yeah, that is one of, but, that's high up on the priority list for 
I'm shifting gears next week, and I'm going to focus on that sludge clean out project and try to figure out what we're doing. What we're doing. I mean, everything's in place to do it. Yeah. It's just I gotta rattle some cages for some some assistance. Yeah. Yeah. So are we just gonna have a special meeting next week? We are. We are. We are just gonna wait. We don't need it. Right. We're going to wait and see what the town manager's office wants to do. Um, yeah. Let's do this. Yeah. Do motion to go to yeah, so I've got a very lengthy um, oh. motion that you're welcome to read if you want. <laughs> the whole thing. <laughs> Usually we would just read the first line, but um, someone has uh, suggested that, so go ahead. Oh, okay. Okay. All of it from the first line down. Mm. Motion. Oh, Danny, uh, motion is hereby made pursuant to 1 VSA 313 A1E and F that premature general public knowledge concerning pending litigation involving Richard B. Town of Harvick versus Gebby would place the town at a substantial disadvantage of real yeah. in that it involves attorney client communications on matters of strategy, discovery, trial preparation, and settlement or litigation options. I hereby move to enter into executive session pursuant to 1 BSA 313 A1E and F for the purpose purposes of engaging in attorney client communications made for the purpose of providing professional legal services to the select board concerning pending litigation and potential settlement. HED Board of Commissioners Chair Kanenkin, HED General Manager Mike Sullivan, and Attorney Mike Letty of McNeil, Letty Sheehan are invited into this executive session and any other personnel should be invited as appropriate. So. The we need the town manager. I don't know who else. Do we need the town manager? Yes. Yes. Uh, we don't need anything with that. Okay. <laughs> that is it. With the name to the invitation noted in the minutes. And somebody can send that to me, right? Yep. Yeah. I, yeah. I, 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 It'll get emailed to you. So that was the motion. Yeah. Second. Second. Oops, sorry. You can have All in favor. <laughs> Aye. 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 So we can't go downstairs because it's messed up. Motion carries. Mike, do you want some of these back?